The Rams took a moment to remind us that first round picks are made for Ethan. The Chargers talk up the spiritual virtues of the offensive line and ESPN's Brian Windbag is gossiping without sources about the Lakers again. Good morning, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So, it's April 9th, 2024. I am back in the Sanctum Sanctorum, back with the wife. She's lovely, life is lovely. What else is lovely? You guessed it, LA Sports. And if you like being in the know about LA, clickety-clack the like button, clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell, hit that. It lets you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist and by all means comment. Now, before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Shohei Otani is on a tear. He went three for five yesterday, two doubles, home run. Dodgers four, Minnesota two. James Outman also homered. Meanwhile, today, the Dodgers are still in Minnesota at a 440 start today. Tyler Glasnow is 2-0 with 3.18 ERA. Lewis Barland is 0-1 with a 6.75 ERA. Golden State, they're at the Lakers at 7. Anthony Davis and LeBron James are questionable, which pretty much means they're going to play. This game is about as must-win as you can get. Not must-win in terms of they get eliminated, of course not. Must win if they want to reclaim a playoff seating of either eight or higher in the Western Conference. The Clippers are at Phoenix at seven, and Kawhi Leonard is out with a knee issue. This game actually matters to the Lakers in the sense that the Suns hold the number six seed, and the Lakers still have a shot at catching them, which means that they would also climb out of the play in tournament if that happened. And the Kings are at Anaheim. That game is at seven. We have spent weeks debating amongst ourselves. Should the Rams replace Aaron Donald by drafting a defensive tackle in the first round? But wait, isn't it so important to get to the quarterback from the outside? Wouldn't an edge rusher be nice? Then uh, the LA Times came along to remind us of the obvious, that the Rams look at a first round pick as something to F. F them picks. They were the team that brought us that phrase. Do you remember that? F them picks. Well, to the Rams, they're in the 19th slot in the first round, and picking 19th in the first round is a reason to play some Al Green and call one of those websites to order a bucket of Viagra. Man, those luscious, sensuous first round picks. Now, general manager Les Snead actually kind of mentioned the possibility because he told the Times, quote, there are scenarios where if you move back, move up, maybe there's a chance you get three players in the first and second round instead of just two. Then there's the possibility you only end up with one if you move up, unquote. And we've talked about this for years. Maybe we just got seduced by the idea of picking middle in the first round. Sneed looks at a first round pick, particularly a late one, and tells himself, eh, that pick may as well be in the second round. It's so damn da down in the first. Why not trade it and see if you can get two? Maybe solve two problems. So if another team is willing to give me two second round picks, I'm strangely aroused. F them picks. Chargers run game coordinator and tight ends coach Andy Bischoff is my spirit animal. And I'm not even a Chargers fan. I don't hate the Chargers, but they're Angelinos, so we're going to talk about them. Why is Andy Bischoff my spirit animal? Because he would probably hear the phrase spirit animal and ask what the hell's a spirit animal, but I digress. He told the LA Times that quarterback Justin Herbert has off-the-charts football e IQ, Quote, however, in our system of football, do we really need to put him under that much stress on every single down? The answer is no, unquote. Now, how you accomplish that, Bishop's reply ought to be carved in stone and carried down Mount Sinai. I am one of those old school type of football guys in the sense that I love an offensive line that punches you in the mouth. These are my words, not his words. His words are, quote, 
this offense and this building is an O-line centric space. Whatever it was in the past, I don't know. I don't live here. I've been here for five weeks, but I can tell you this. This is going to be an O-line centric building. Some people don't value offensive linemen. We do. That will be shown in how we approach everything, unquote. That is music to my ears. You can talk passing routes. You can talk passing yards. You can talk all kinds of crazy stuff as much as you want. But man, my type of football is an offensive line and a defensive front punching each other in the mouth until somebody submits. Sign me up for that. A number of media outlets yesterday reported speculation regarding the future of two Lakers to prominent Lakers as fact yesterday. And they reported it as fact, even though their source of the article had no sources. Their source wasn't a player, wasn't a coach, wasn't a front office guy. It was ESPN. They took the words of Brian Windbag and tried to generate clickbait stories about it, about players leaving the Lakers. This continues to happen and it's got to stop. Brian Windbag said, quote, I think LeBron is going to opt out no matter what, unquote. Notice the first two words out of the guy's mouth was, I think. Not, my sources say, not, oh, I talked with people who didn't want to go on the record with the Lakers, not people around the NBA that I trust have told me, or LeBron's people have told me. No, 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 it's I think. And so multiple Lakers blogs posted this as if it were breaking news that LeBron wanted to leave as opposed to, these are just my random thoughts. Windbag thinks James wants a no trade clause to prevent a scenario such as what happened this last trade deadline when Golden State lobbed Rob Palinka a call about James. To which I might remind Windbag, that was a story that you and every other blowhard at ESPN and the national sports media blew up into the stratosphere about James. Check the receipts on this program. Check the receipts. In February on this program, I was like, Golden State called the Lakers. And the Lakers laughed in their face and said, pound sand. ESPN ran with that story for an entire week as if the Lakers were the ones lobbing Golden State a call as opposed to the other way around. Where Golden State was like, what do we got to do to get LeBron James? And the Lakers told them to buzz the F off. What short-term memory these scribes have, I swear to God. They laughed at Golden State's face and ESPN ran with the story for a week. Like it was still going to happen after the trade deadline. Now look, maybe Le LeBron James does in fact want a no trade clause. Maybe he remembers that he's LeBron James and the Lakers would never trade him. Right? And if I'm the Lakers, I'm sitting there going, you're really calling this a story? We don't have a problem giving LeBron James a no trade clause. He's LeBron effing James. Brian Windbag. No sources, just random thoughts. And the Lakers blogosphere blows up. And by the way, that wasn't the only player that Windbag talked about. He fantasized another story out of his out of the researches. The, re, the, the, the depths, I should say. He fantasized another story from the depths of, of his mind. He was saying that D'Angelo Russell was going to exercise, uh, was going to opt out of a player option next, uh, this uh, upcoming off season. And once again, the following quote from Windbag will not say, my sources indicate will not say, people in the Lakers organization have told me. No, 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 no. It's, quote, I think almost certainly he will not pick up the player option. You work your whole life to be coming off a great season and being unrestricted, unquote. I think. I think. So, you take a step back, 
you look at these two non-stories and you might wonder to yourself, why the hell is this news? Two players who may go into free agency instead of exercising their option. There is only one reason and one reason only why this is a story. ESPN, no, no, no. The entirety of American sports journalism makes a lot of clickbait cash off of creating their own rumors in their own minds. There's no sourcing here. There's no LeBron James doesn't really want to be with the Lakers unless they come to terms with him in what came flying out of Windbag's cake hole. There's nothing in there that says D'Angelo Russell wants to leave the Lakers. Now, granted, they might both like to become free agents, but you got to give me something to actually hang your hat on with that instead of what rattles around in that, in that cranium of yours. The entirety of American sports journalism for years has been talking about the Lakers without any sources at all. This is just windbag windbagging. And again, the Lakers probably don't give a damn about giving LeBron James a no trade clause anyway. So what are we talking about here? Clippers assistant coach Jay Laranaga will interview for the soon-to-be vacant Charlotte job. The Hornets' current coach said he will be leaving at the end of the year. Uh, Laranaga has worked under Ty Lu for three years. Before that, he was an assistant coach over in Boston. Shohei Otani said he has been using a cricket bat, of all things, to help his hitting mechanics before the game. Now, cricket is a, played with a bat where one of the side has been flattened to make it kind of look like a long, slender paddle. The result of using a cricket bat is that swinging the shaft with it, it stays longer in the zone. So it kind of, I don't know what the hell it does, frankly, but for whatever reason, Shohei Otani thinks swinging a cricket bat feels good. And by the way, the way he's hitting, he can swing whatever the hell he wants. He can swing a fly swatter, as far as I'm concerned, if he thinks that's gonna help his batting mechanics. He said his rehab from Tommy John surgery has been chugging along right on schedule. He did throw a baseball around again Sunday in Chicago. There is no such thing as job stability in the Dodgers bullpen. We know this going on with their habit of making one pointless transaction every other day. The Dodgers recently promoted the recently acquired Connor Brogdon and then they demoted Gus Varland back to Oklahoma City. Brogdon had previously spent his entire career in Philadelphia. Uh, perhaps it's best for him that his time in L.A. will be brief, probably, because in L.A. we actually respect our players. He might not know what hit him. Wait, you're not cussing out my mom with every pitch? What the hell is this? I'm so confused. So, yeah, welcome to L.A. Probably for only about three days, Connor Brogdon. The LA Galaxy have reported a racist social media incident against winger Joseph Paintsill to Major League Soccer in the aftermath of El Trafico. It was a post on Twitter, which is surprising because after all, Twitter is the repository of the deepest intellectual thought. Yea, back in the day, the ancient Greeks would gather around the campfire and philosophize about what is reality, and today we take that to Twitter. Same difference, right? Now, for the record, I did read the tweet. Uh, that was some original recipe bigotry right there. That is nothing you can spin, dude. I'm not, I'm not telling you guys to look it up. I'm here to tell you. And I am the furthest thing from a social justice warrior. That was a racist... That was some racism, man. It was so bad that even though Galaxy and LAFC fans have been cussing each other out for days, they all kind of paused and said, ooh, that doesn't look good at all, does it? There was no debate about that tweet. Even the LAFC fans, extremely defensive about their own team, their own players, et cetera, were like, yeah, I'm not okay with that tweet. Now, what's going to happen because of that tweet? Honestly, probably nothing. I don't know if the LAFC fans know who's tweeting on behalf of their team. 
If they can call him out and kind of say, hey, we don't want that here, cool. Choose another team in another country if you're going to talk like that. Cool. Get out. But I don't know, man. I mean, you look at them Twitter profiles. You're looking at dudes who are covered in masks, who, who give you fake names, who use a Bart Simpson avatar or something like that. Good luck trying to find that racist, I'm telling you. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Talk to me. If you believe now, knowing what uh, Les Need is saying, if the Rams will keep their first round pick. Talk to me about the Chargers' commitment to the run at last. Legit commitment to the run. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Cortel Queso production. Take care.